Before we begin, thank you very much to 4C for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. As always, it helps tremendously to keep the channel going and to keep the videos coming. And I thank each and every one of you for allowing me to continue doing this. Oh, and for my $15 and up patrons, just to sweeten the pot a little bit, because I'm trying to do everything, I'm trying to do more for my Patreon, my patrons. Um, instead of rev asking for a toy review request, uh, at $15, you can now ask me for anything, like literally anything that's in the style that I've been doing lately. Have at it. Ask me for whatever you want. There you go. So I was looking for another website to deep dive, things that I hadn't really thought of before because uh, we've done eBay, we've done Wish, and you know, there's a few top more topics we can do in that realm, and we can kind of do a few of them over again just to see what's changed and different. But for now... I thought, let me actually look up myself. And I decided I'd go to TV Tropes for that because yes, I do have a TV Tropes page. I haven't checked it in years. So I'm actually kind of curious as to how much has changed. What I'm looking at right now has not changed. Uh, this, is a, this is the closest to a landing page as I can get. Uh, TJ Omega, real name Tyler James, is an internet reviewer and member of RVT. Well, this page hasn't been updated in a long time. He got to start reviewing toys, mainly Transformers, and had a YouTube channel. Had? Okay, okay, it's Plastic Attic. I don't see where that mistake comes from. Uh, since then, he's been doing more standard reviews. In addition to that, also a review show. Kids called TJTV. Uh, rest in peace, TJTV and Blip and all the things that allowed that series to be a thing. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, this is a lot. Well, most of this is what I remember. Now, from what I can tell just from one page, this is longer than it used to be. Um, the web video part alone seems to have a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, um, I'm not going to read through all of it because it would take all day, but you know what? I decided, let me just click through the tabs and I'm just going to talk and repeat my favorite ones. So let me get started with that. In his Armada Sideswipe review, he gets in an argument with the opening and in the end he fires it. I totally forgot I did that. I generally think of the Armada Sideswipe review in a little bit of a negative tone because I didn't really plan it and prep it as much as I did other plastic addicts. I thought it was just very run-of-the-mill, but apparently a lot of people still like that one. Oh, okay, deal with the devil. In what if Optimus Prime survived the 86 movie, Unicron offers Starscream to become his herald. Unlike Megatron in the movie, Starscream jumps at the opportunity for power and willingly accepts the bargain, being upgraded into Nova Scream. Nova Scream is in TV tropes. Okay, so apparently, yeah, um, and there's another entry down here, Enemy Mine, about uh, Megatron ultimately siding with the Autobots against Unicron, so, uh, so it's weird, uh, that's weird, so yeah, apparently this is pretty up to date, because it's got a lot of my current stuff going on, uh, at least some of it, that's interesting, that's interesting, now I'm curious, now I'm curious who's actually doing this. There's three. There, in this page alone, there is three entries for what if Optimus Prime survived the 86 movie. I didn't think it was that great of a video. Uh, this is just a thing. It's just, it's just me reading a fanfic in my head. <laughs> I'm guilty of jerk with a heart of gold. Uh, t Plastic Addict TJTV persona amps up the anger and snarky, but snarker e, but retains his appreciation for his fans. I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. Like, you guys make me who I am. You know, if I am the alpha, you, you know, if I am the omega, you are the alphas. You know, you are the ones who allow me to exist. You know, and that that is amazing to me. Thank you so much. I love you guys. More Daka. One thing he absolutely loved about Mad Blender is how many guns he got. Uh, conversely, this, among other reasons, is why he despised G.I. Joe Extreme. No, I, I, I despised G.I. Joe Extreme's gun content because they considered guns a character, a character, a characterization. That's, that's just a big difference between a character having a lot of guns and a character being identified as just something that holds a lot of guns. Reviewed his own first toy review and pretty much chewed himself out for 90% of it. He ends up disowning himself at one point. So I did that because I used some copyrighted music in the original and I had to take it down. So uh, that's what created the uh, the uh, mockery version of it. Um, there is a thought in my head of how ridiculous it would be if I also did the exact same thing again 
and reviewed my own review reviewing me. But I feel like that's too many layers. Oh, that's a that's a massive wall of text just basically recounting like a third of TJTV. Okay, um, I don't have time to read all of that. I want to get to some of the other tabs because this is just the web video tab. Uh, we have awesome, funny, heartwarming. I, what do I do that is heartwarming? <laughs> I don't they make fun of toys. Um, I don't know of anything I've ever done that is heartwarming outside of, you know, just thanking you guys, you know, and all that. Like, I think the last time I warmed a heart during one of my reviews was doing all the junk food during Energon Optimus Prime. Yeah, your, mile, your mileage may vary very short. This is about how I remember it. Uh, Juggernaut. God, I miss using Juggernaut as a theme. Oh, man. I, 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 I technically still could. It's it's free to use, but... Mm. It seems like Hasbro took note of his video. Here's 10 G1 Transformers who need new toys because every single character ranked on the list ended up getting new toys in the, Cyber, in the War for Cybertron trilogy toy line. I don't necessarily think that I was, like... I don't think Hasbro took notes, and I don't think I'm psychic. I think I was just good at picking who was due, which is basically what Hasbro does. It, I, what I'm saying is Hasbro needs to hire me. That's what I'm saying. Trivia tab. Um, TJ ended up not being fond of letting his channel become a bit generic, in his opinion, where he originally intended it for, for it to be a good bit more experimental and fun. He eventually cut his hair as a sign of it and declared he would return to that spirit. And then I didn't. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, that was the that was the first burnout. That was the first burnout where I was basically just doing random reviews two or three times a week, and that's all I was doing. And I just got sick of just doing nothing but talking about toys in front of the same same camera, in front of the same backdrop, time in, time out. I cut the hair and pinned it to my door to remind myself, don't get complacent again. And then I got complacent again. And then, you, but look, look what happened. Look what happened. You know, a pandemic happened. The hair came back. And now, like, apparently I am Samson because my full power has been restored and even amplified. Old shame. He considers TJTV to be this to a degree. By his own admission, it was made uh, the way it was to try and get him on Channel Awesome. Then that guy with the glasses. And with recent scandals and problems with the site, one of which hurt some of his friends personally, he comes to regret doing so, and it's part of the reason he hasn't been able to do a series for a long time. But be fair, there's even a lot more reasons why. There's just every story I heard about that place was how toxic it was from the inside. Uh, as a result, the series will receive a retool to make it more his style, which what he genuinely wants to do. Hmm. I still need to do that, don't I? Hmm. Okay, let's see what is in the heartwarming. Okay, it's not it's not too long. Okay, so genuine appreciate for the fans. Thank you. Thank you, whoever posted that. Thanks for lying. Uh I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um the last half is G1 Squawk talking Beast Box. Oh right. Yeah, because yeah, like that was a legitimately emotional like reconnection uh to a to an old toy. And then, and then uh yeah, the rant at the end of G.I. Joe Extreme. Uh I I'm not sure that is heartwarming. I was just furious. That's all that was. Um, yeah, but hey, if 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 you feel it's heartwarming, then all the power to you. Like I, I mean, I felt very emotional for that for that video. Awesome! What moments of awesome have I done talking about cheap pieces of plastic? Getting the nostalgia critic to make a cameo in Sonic Underground. Awesome at the time. In hindsight. <laughs> Okay, the Edgar Allan Poe uh, Plastic Addict for uh, for Beast Machines Silverbolt. Yeah. Uh, he later said this episode had the most work going into it of any Plastic Addict ever. The script took a year. Yes, it did. It was an on and off project. On and off, I would work on it. Which basically means I would open it up, change a couple lines, and then close it for like, uh, you know, like a week or two before I opened it up again. And then one day I just finally like sat down and just like, hammer the whole thing the the rest of it out finally but yeah uh yeah and then the filming was really complex on that one too so yeah a year and the most work for a single video but that's for plastic addict uh since then i've done videos that had way more work involved oh a tj top story is in here huh Let's see um 
Okay, yeah, it's Marari. It's my it's my false bard. And it's yeah, it's him bluffing his way to keep his fake guys up and the and the uh, the holy tornado gambit. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I will accept that. I will accept that. Marari has done some awesome things. Um, I've got a character now who's doing awesome things. I really want to do more TJ Ableton, but nobody watches it. I need to, I need to play. F I need I need to play for numbers because I, I need this channel to make more money. Uh, thank you again to my patrons, by the way. Okay, funny tab. This better be the longest one. This better be the longest ones. The funny tab. I do know. I do notice a few repeats here. The top one is again Armada side swipes uh, intro, firing the opening and all that. See, um, yeah, uh, see the entire Supreme Cheetor review, cutaway gags, deadpan, deadpan snarker, uh, yeah, the reversed speech. Uh, I took that bit from Red Dwarf, by the way. Red Dwarf had an episode where everything was in a backwards universe, and they came up with some some gibberish lines of backwards. Uh, it, it's yeah, so I, I kind of borrowed that joke, but I didn't I didn't use it exactly the same way. See, TJ TV episode 23 opens with TJ's evil descendant from the future coming back to try and kill him, apparently having found his way to do so without re uh, negating himself, and is horrified to find TJ watching My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Oh, <sighs> uh, yes. God, that was back, like, back in that era of video reviewing. Everyone only had themselves to work with. No one had any other actors to be other characters. So if you wanted a villain, if you wanted a secondary character in any way, uh, you had to come up with, it was a clone. It was a robot that looked like me. You know, in my case, it was the descendant from the future. And he talked like this. So I made his dialogue take very, very little time because I could not keep this up. Even doing that hurts way more than it used to. I'm so out of practice with that voice. Anytime he and Scott McNeil interact. Aww. I'm upset because Scott, Scott wasn't at Metrocon in 2019. Though that actually... There was a twist there that worked out for the best. Uh, in 2020, no, no con because there was pandemic. 2021, he didn't show up. So it's been more than two years since I've seen Scott. And that's... Uh, upsetting i like I, I miss the man the inappropriate transformers you know i could probably do one of those a week and never run out <laughs> there's so many weird design choices that look uh questionable to say the least uh let's see the appliance heroes i've got another idea for a video similar to that but the way i want to do it would kind of be expensive and i don't know how much material i would get out of it uh we'll see We'll see. Uh, patrons, keep an eye out. I might need your help on that one. Let's see, the Minecraft First Night Lego set includes an attempt at him trying to actually build it in game. I'm actually super proud of that video, by the way. I actually really love that video. And uh, let's see, um, present TJ informs Minecraft TJ that it was physically impossible to do it in one night anyway, due to requiring a silk touch enchanted pick to get the grass to the roof. And many people in the comments pointed out there is an easier way to get grass onto the roof. All you need is a staircase of dirt. Uh, did not know that at the time, but hey, it made for a funnier outcome, didn't it? And the last one is a TJ Ableton. Uh, there's, there's probably more people seeing this right now than has actually seen an episode of TJ Ableton. So uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for whoever uh, created this page in the first place for putting down so many things that nobody else has seen. Whoever is like doing the editing on this has got to be just a major, major follower because they've kept up a lot of stuff. Um, let's see, yeah, I did that, did that, did that. Yeah, I think that's about all I got here. I, I'm still like shocked and amazed that there's like any kind of web space on like a website like this devoted to me, you know, because I don't have a wiki page or you know, I don't have a page on Wikipedia. I genuinely don't have a reason for having one i know someone once upon a time was doing a actual wikia just for me i know uh that didn't go very far i think i think it only covered like 10 episodes of plastic addict last i checked um yeah i don't think those are enough to go on and die but this is fun like it's interesting to find out that there's still people that not only have been following long enough to have created this in the first place because i saw this like like at least five years ago for the first time and then are still updating it 
with, with stuff I did like this month, which is crazy to me. So to whoever is doing this, to whoever is actually like keeping all this up to date and giving me so many little uh, marks on TV tropes, thank you. Thank you. This is actually super cool to see. And thank you guys for watching. I'm going to try and think of some more websites I can deep dive for weird stuff like this. Maybe not as egocentric as this was, but you know what? I like browsing websites with you guys and giving some reactions because it's fun. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.